Welcome back to In a Tiny Garden. Today we're going to be sowing quite a few seeds, including the courgette and cucumber seeds, but I'm going to wait until next week or the week after to start any squash because I just don't have enough space and it's been really cold in the evenings here. So the hardening off process has been a bit slow. So yes, there's quite a few things that are still inside, but today everything is off the heated propagator and hopefully by the end of today this will be almost filled up. I've got a new um, order that just arrived of some more seeds that was meant to come a month ago. So I'll put a list of what I'm sowing in the timestamps below so you can kind of skip if you want to, to whatever you want to see. Um, and I'll also put a list here of what I'm gonna be sowing today so you know exactly. I'm very excited. So I hope you'll join me. I'm just watering all the seedlings outside. It was quite a dry day as it has been for quite a while. You can't forget about the seedlings outside whilst I go and sow some more. So we've got the flowers on the top that are spending the evenings outside and the days out of the greenhouse. The chard, beetroot, dill, some leftover brassicas, some flowers, and the lettuce, which we're about to prick out, and the leeks, which have started to grow. We've also got some of the herbs we were growing, some beetroot and chard. And then over here, we've got the brassicas that could go out quite soon now that it's warming up a bit and some extra lettuce and parsley and Swiss chard. So the sweet potato are doing well. This is the slip I took off a couple weeks ago and it's rooted really well. So I'm gonna give that its own pot very soon. And you'll be pleased to know that we've got a shoot on the turmeric. Yay, turmeric's on the go. And it's buddy Ginger has grown really tall. The leaves smell super muchly of uh, ginger, which is really nice. And I should give that a bigger pot too. The luffa I left outside down to sort of six. And um, out before I remembered, kind of eight o'clock at night to bring it back in. So it suffered a leaf. One of the leaves fell, fell off, um, but its buddy is doing all right. So yes, these are very temperamental and do not like any cold whatsoever. Um, so I shouldn't have even really started acclimatizing it out yet. Anyway, like these uh, aubergines and the chili, they're staying put inside with me for a long time. Digitalis is growing away. The newer tomatoes are growing a bit behind. And the agretti I can put outside now. I don't think we're gonna get too much more germination. I was a bit erratic with my watering, so I think some of these have dried out. And the tomatoes had their first two days of sun outside and all of a sudden we had really bright sunny days. So in fact, they've been a little bit scorched, which you can see the white on their leaves, but that's absolutely fine. Um, but yes, they ideally acclimatization, acclimatization for cold and for sun. If they've mostly been inside on a windowsill, putting them out in direct sunlight is a bit of a shock for them, but they'll be fine. You can see they are really touching each other now, which they don't love. So. I really don't want to have to pot them all on into bigger pots, but we'll see how we go. I'm not going to do it this week. So let's get sewing.
So I'm being really bad and I'm sewing two more varieties of tomato. It's cocktail crush. So I'm just doing three seeds in this little pot and then I'll cover them over with vermiculite. And honeyed, honeycomb cherry. That is apparently a lot like sungold. So I'm quite excited to grow this one as well. I'll do three seeds again because I really didn't get that many seeds in this packet. And then I give them a nice watering in with warm water to not shock them. And then I'll put them on the heated propagator. Hopefully they catch up to their brothers and sisters. So a really good rule of thumb, mind the pun, is to measure bits of your hand so that you know, um, you can memorize what measurements are for planting out and that sort of thing. So I'm about to plant some courgettes and they are two centimeters down. So that's about the first bit of my finger here. See, perfect. So I'm planting courgettes and they can be planted anytime sort of March to May inside and then outside sort of April to June. And I'm planting two seeds and I'm planting them next to each other. I will thin out the weakest seedling and I'll leave the strongest seedling when they come up. With courgette seeds and also with squash seeds, which we'll be sowing in a couple weeks time when it's warmer, you wanna make sure that when you plant them, you plant them on their sides. And that's because if they're planted face up like this, water can collect on the surface of the seed and it can rot. So you wanna make sure that they go down in that direction, two centimeters down into the soil, which is about that much on my finger because I've measured my finger. So, and then I'm just gonna make sure that I water them in really well. And then I'm gonna put them on the heated propagator so they've got sort of a nice even temperature, kind of 20 degrees. And then these can go out quite soon after because we're now in mid-April and the frost should be over here in a couple of weeks. And that's it for courgette. Courgette al fresco is a really nice, really tasty sort of whitish, colored mid-size courgette. It's really, really good. I grew it in the last couple of years. And then courgette zephyr is really fun. I grew it last year and it's kind of a lime green on top and then just the bottom is yellow. So it's a nice kind of double colored uh, courgette, something a bit different and really tasty and you can harvest it really small as well. And then courgette tromboncino di alberga is those huge ones you might you might have seen. If you haven't, I'll, I'll try and link a picture up in the corner. And you can actually harvest them like you do courgette, nice and young, or you can wait and let the skin harden and treat them more like uh, winter squash. And they actually uh, stay quite, quite some time in storage if you let the skin harden, but um, they're really good. And I've, I've made some excellent soups from those. Now I'm going to be sowing the cucumber and I grew just one variety last year. It was a really good one, but I've run out of seeds this year. So I've actually got three different ones. So for the cucumber, I'm going to be planting three seeds per module. And again, I'm just gonna thin the two weakest ones and leave the strongest one. And I'm going to be sowing this time only one centimeter down because the seeds are quite a bit smaller than the courgette. So just one centimeter down and then cover it over. And these are quite a bit smaller, so do try and plant them vertically like we did the courgette. So that one is a patio snacker, which is quite nice if you've got a small space. The next one is burpless tasty green. And then the last one is a nemesis plant for me. It's the cucumelon or mouse, mouse melon. Um, I have had maybe one or two and I tried to grow them about seven years ago. They didn't go very well, but it was kind of the best one I got but uh, I tried them again in subsequent years and yeah, I just, I think I didn't treat them very well. So this time I'm gonna keep an eye on them along with my other cucumbers and just really, really try hard. I didn't even, I don't think I tried for the last two years. So they're back again. So the cucumelon seeds are a little smaller than the cucumber seeds. So actually I might do four just in case. And then I'm gonna sow these a little even more shallow so maybe like half a centimeter down because they are 
quite small. And kind of a, as a rule of thumb, you, you sow seeds kind of twice, two to three times their depth, their size, sorry. And then just like the courgettes, I'm gonna give these a nice water. And then I'll put this on the heated propagator and they'll stay inside until all risk of frost has passed. And then I'll start acclimatizing them out. So now I'm gonna plant the corn and the beans in the same tray because they need sort of similar conditions and it's just easier for me to be moving in and out. I'm gonna sow my sweet corn in here first and I'm actually gonna grow two different varieties this year. Golden Bantam, which I grew last year. I'm gonna sow two seeds, 2.5 centimeters down. It's about there. Whoops. The next variety is True Gold and I'm quite excited to grow this one. I've only got eight seeds in the packet though, so um, I'm just gonna be grow doing four, two seeds each. And with the Golden Bantam, later on in spring, probably when I plant these out, I'll actually sow more, so I've got a bit of a succession of sweet corn, which will be really nice, so that they're not all ready at the same time. Because with sweet corn, as soon as they're ready to go, they're all ready to go almost. Um, these are both heritage varieties, so they won't, they'll be a bit of a stagger, but um, yeah, it's best to successionally sow sort of twice if you can. I'm just gonna top these up with a bit more compost and then give them a water. Next, I'm going to be sowing my edamame beans. So I grew these edamame beans last year and I absolutely love them because I love edamame beans but uh, I sowed them outside and the germination was a bit erratic. So although the packet says to sow outside, I'm gonna sow them in here so I can do a little experiment. And I'm actually gonna do two seeds per module and it's four centimeters down. So if you measure your finger, four centimeters, that's just the beginning of my knuckle. I'm now gonna sow some climbing French beans, which, you know, I'm not in love with the taste of, so I'm not gonna grow as many as I did last year, but I'm growing the same uh, variety, one of the same varieties, Barlotto Lingua di Fuoco 2. Now, this is a packet of seeds that my seeds from last year came out of, but the seeds that I saved last year were absolutely crawling with weevils. So this whole packet had probably um, 20 weevils in it. If you're lucky, I'll put up a video of, of it in the corner. And um, so anyway, I separated them out and indeed it was from my saved beans. So I've got a, a bee, pea and bean weevil issue at the allotment. Anyway, so these ones are okay. And so I'm gonna plant some of them in here and then some of them in these bigger pots. Actually scratch that, I'm going to plant these directly into my eight centimeter, nine centimeter pots. So they've got more space. And then I was gonna experiment and do some in here and some in here, but actually I've just remembered that I've got from a seed swap, some dwarf uh, French bean purple queen, which I've never grown before. And as they're smaller, they'll be able to handle kind of the smaller size tray. Shorter than these, but never mind. So I'm actually gonna put these in here and then I'll just put these in the big pots. So. Purple Queen Dwarf Bean is going in here. Two centimeters down. I'm gonna sew one or two each. And then I'm gonna give the beans a nice water. And then in here, I'll put the really tall climbing French beans, Borlotto di Lingua di Fuoco 2. These are the ones that had serious vine, uh, weevil damage, pea and bean weevil. Anyway, two centimeters down for these guys too. I'm gonna to put two in some pots and one in others, just for fun. And then I'll water these in as well. And then they're gonna stay inside with me until they germinate. And then I'll start acclimatizing the edamame and the sweet corn first, followed by these guys, because they really don't like being cold. And you can sow these kind of April, May time, mid-April to May. 
and June direct cell. And now we're going to prick out the lettuce, second batch of lettuce. So now I'm going to prick out the next second successional sowing batch of lettuce. So these, in a few weeks time, will join their earlier brothers and sisters out of the allotment. But first, I'm going to prick them out into here and keep them in the garden in the greenhouse. Or just outside the greenhouse because they can handle it. Like I said in the previous video for lettuce pricking out and most of the pricking out, you want to make sure that you hold it by its leaf, not its stem and you want to lever out the roots as gently as possible. So you don't want to break any of them. And you can kind of hear a little pop if you, if you know that you've broken one. They should just slide out gently. So the reason you hold it by the leaf and not the stem is because plants can regenerate new leaves, but they can't regenerate a new stem. So if the stem's broken, it's game over. So they're all pricked out and I'm gonna give them a light water. And then they're gonna go back outside where they were because they are already hardened off and they can handle any temperatures from now. So that's lettuce pricking out again for a second successional sowing. So if you enjoyed the episode today, I hope you'll consider subscribing and watching a few more and let me know what you think in the comments below.